Hey guys, in this video I am going to talk about a ticking, ticket booking application which I built as a challenge. Um, this challenge was posted by in some platform and we had time restrictions so we had to build this entire application within 6 hours and then there were some brownie points and that was like if you can make a UI then it it's all good but I couldn't make any UI because I didn't have time and then another brownie point was you can deploy it to any um, hosting AWS, Heroku, anything so I deployed it to Heroku because I didn't have an AWS account so uh, I completed one of the extra tasks but nah, yeah if I could have done the UI part I would be feeling better ok the project was to develop a microservice for ticket booking only for the ticket booking part so they didn't specifically mention um, it's a microservice but it kind of is a microservice because it's solving a particular problem of a bigger picture for example if you are trying to clone a uh, book my show or any of these applications ticket booking application a part of the application is the actual ticket booking and there are other parts associated with this as well so it can be considered to be a microservice because this service has its own database which it which it talks to so um yeah so let's get into what they asked in the problem statement so they're basically looking for four api endpoints so basically three endpoints but one of them has dual, fe dual features so one of the endpoints was screens so a particular URL slash screen would allow us okay so the uh, main part of this thing was we have to do all the requests and response in the form of a JSON so everything has to be in JSON the request will be in JSON the response will be in JSON and whenever you um, you make a response you have to give us a status like if it's success it's status 200 if it is um, problem then 500 something use 500 range errors and suppose um, it's not a problem like it's not like the system like the system is acting up or uh, it's like it's that you can't process the request at this moment because uh, a particular city is reserved for example in those cases you can use another status code for example 411 or something like that so it's up to you how you want to use it and another requirement was we have to make this thing run on port uh, 1990 so I okay I used a express generator because it's a, a faster way to scaffold a project so uh, I used the port 1990 here I just hard coded it um, yeah so port 1990 here is the only change I made here and then uh, okay so let me tell you what they really asked in the question so uh, so only for slash you have to um, so the API endpoint uh, URL slash screens the input is going to be like uh, they're going to give you the uh, screen and all the sitting arrangement for that particular screen here this by screen they mean like uh, inox or city center or anything like a movie hall they're talking about a movie hall as a screen so for example uh, they want to give you inox sitting arrangement so the request will be in a json but a serialized version that is the string version of the json which will have the screen name and the details of the sitting arrangement for example the row means row a row b row c and the number of seats in the rows and then the corner seats all these details are going to be in the request so let me see how much time four minutes so i can record till 10 minutes okay so it's going to be like that and you have to somehow parse it and store it somehow like they didn't specify where you want to store it you can store it in database or you can store it in, in memory or redis or just variables like just in memory but not in memory cache like redis so i used um, database for this because um, like if you think about a bit database is the obvious better solution okay so if I show you the schema then you probably understand what the request is going to look like so 
So the request is going to have a name, the screen name, and then it's going to have seed info, which which is uh, going to be an array because there are more than one row, and each row has a particular name. So then uh, row name is going to be A or B or C or whatever, and then it's going to have details, and details is going to have the number of seeds, and then the corner seeds. Like uh, for example, it has ten seeds, so all 10 seats are not continuous contiguous so 0 to 4 may be together then 5 to 8 are together and then 2 seats at the corner so it's going to give you this information which are the corner seats or which are the like um, the, the uh, end seats of the particular um, section let's say uh, so we have to store all this information and um, like you can probably understand like for every screen um, your API is going to get hit. So Inox is going to send its screen information. CC is going to send its screen information. Max is going to send its screen information, and so on. So this is the part where your um, API is going to get the data which needs to fulfill its request. Otherwise, like if the if the data of the Inox is not there, you should ask for the data, then the system is going to give an error because it does not have the data of Inox. Okay. Oh, I, okay, so like just to be clear, I know um, some of the things don't really add up, but you can understand since it's part of a challenge, it's not really a entire project. So I know some parts are not um, proper, let, let's say, but be Okay, so the screens also has two end, uh, endpoints one is reserve and another is seats. So this, what this reserve is going to do is it's going to take the screen name, for example, I know. And it's going to give you the and it's going to give you a JSON format of all the seats which are reserved. So row A has seats three and four reserved. So it's going to give you um, inox, then seats, then row A, so and so, row B, so and so, all the reserved seats. And then this seats endpoint is going to have dual role. So one of the role is to give you the list of unreserved seats for a particular screen name. The second task is uh, if, the, if the user wants to book um, some x number of seats, for example, two seats, and he has a particular choice, for example, A4. So your system is supposed to calculate uh, if it is possible to give the user two seats of his choosing, like he chose A4, so uh, A3 or A4 or A4 or A5. So if it's possible to allocate A3, A4, it will give him A3, A4 or A4, A5. Like that. If it's not possible, you have to say it's not possible. So this is what they asked us to make in the six hours time. Um, it seems simple, but then when you actually try to make it, uh, it takes time. At least it took time for me. Okay. So um, there were brownie points there as well. So brownie points was if you can if you can deploy your application to uh, cloud hosting, for example AWS or Heroku or anything like that. So I deployed it to Heroku, but um, they asked for port 9090, but then Heroku does not allow us to expose any port other than port 80. Yeah, that's what I read in some online material. If, if you think Heroku allows us to um, run an application on um, other ports like 9090, like this, tell me how I will probably do it. And so okay, so we have to deploy it here, and then another another brownie point was to make uh, a UI for this application. Uh, I couldn't, I didn't, didn't have the time to make the UI because I was just you know, like it's not like you have six hours to completely code it, like because um, in the last few minutes you have to uh, delete the node modules and then zip the entire project, take screenshots, like some documentation I this is minimal documentation which you are seeing here um, in the actual answer I have to write good documentation about how to deploy the project what is using and all so you basically have five hours 30 minutes to actually code other times like you have to do all these things take screenshots then upload them make sure it's uploaded properly so it takes time so this is all for this video, probably in the next videos I will explain how I started this application.